I'm excited about today. Uh, we're going to continue on, and we started the series last week called The Stretch. It's the Stretch series, and we're talking about how God puts us in, uh, you know, or not, He doesn't put us in, but through situations that we may encounter, God will use situations to stretch us. He'll stretch our faith. He'll stretch us, and, and we talked about how a lot of times the stretch is uncomfortable. It can be very uncomfortable, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the course, the, what I use was like, you know, like when you're, I don't know about y'all, but I, I don't like to stretch, you know, uh, but it's important to stretch, you know, like if you work out and, and you do strenuous activities, I mean, it's important to stretch because if you don't, you can actually injure yourself. Okay, I mean, I don't know if y'all heard that. that. That's pretty deep there. It just hit me. I mean, that's pretty, if you don't stretch yourself, you can eventually injure yourself. You know, so it's important to stretch, even though the stretch may be uncomfortable at times, it's important to stretch. It's important to let God stretch us, stretch our faith, stretch us in situations. And and, and, uh, the story, you know, I read last week was in Acts 3, and we talked about, you know, when Peter and John was walking up to the gates for prayer, and they encountered the man who was crippled all his life, and he was reaching out for change, and and this is kind of where I got the title for this next message, and today I want to talk about reach. I want to talk about reaching, because reaching, as the Lord began to reveal this to me, reaching is a form of stretching. You hear what I'm saying? Because see, this man that was crippled last week that we talked about, see, he was reaching out for something that he thought he needed, but he got something else in return because he didn't get what he thought he needed he got what he really needed you know God and it's like the thing I said you know a lot of times we reach out for for that change like he was whatever that may be in our lives we reach out for that money or or we reach out for that success or we reach out for this or we reach out for that and then a lot of times we end up getting something totally different in return because a lot of times it's we don't really know what we need. We think we know what we need. This guy was like, man, I just need some money so I can go to McDonald's and get me a double cheeseburger today and then I'll come back tomorrow and get some more money. You know? But God was like, you know what? I, I don't want you to just live day to day. I don't want you to just you know, flow through life. I want to give you something. I want to give you something that's going to change your life. You know what, though? He never would have received the healing that he got had he not what? reached had he not stretched out and reached for something he would have never gotten what was coming to him so it's important to understand in this in the stretch series that we need to be reaching for something and sometimes that's a stretch for us you know what i mean because you know my and i ain't trying to make fun so don't don't get mad you know my wife is shorter okay (laughs) She's shorter. And so like if she needs something like on the top shelf, she'll reach for it and she can't quite get it. And so she'll call me in there because she knows I can reach it. I hope y'all are hearing this. Sometimes you may try to reach for something and you don't feel like you can get it. Come on. You don't feel like you can get it. But when you call on the name of Jesus, when you call on the one that can reach it for you, He comes up and gets it for you and puts it in your hand, puts it in your grasp. The crippled man was reaching for something. And he said, you know what? I I can't reach it. God said, that's all right. I'm on the way. I'll get it for you. And then he put it in his hand. And when he put it in his hand, his life was changed. His life was changed. So it's important for us to reach, even though sometimes it feels like it can be a stretch and we don't feel like we can get it, it's important for us to reach. Today I want to start in Acts chapter 4. I'm going to read verse 13. It says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm astonished at your commonness. You are so ordinary, and I'm astonished by it. I'm so... Husbands, this is what your wives want to hear. They want you to tell them that you're astonished by their ordinariness. I'm just kidding, don't say that. 
But these men were astonished at Peter and John. And you know, and I thought that was great. He said they were astonished because they were uneducated common people. They were astonished at their commonness. But it said they perceived something in them. They perceived that they had been with Jesus. You know that people can see and tell who you've been with? You ever heard the statement? You ever heard this statement? Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Because who you surround yourself with ultimately becomes who you begin to act like and who you begin to portray. And who, you see what I'm saying? You know, I, and I was thinking about this and I was like, man, that is so true. And if anybody is the world's worst at doing that, it is me. Okay, and my family can attest to this. Okay, when I was young and we grew up over in Adamsville, I acted a totally different kind of way because of the environment that I was in and the people that I surrounded myself with. I acted completely different. And then when we moved to Hueytown and I got around a lot of the country folk, all of a sudden I started wearing tight blue jeans and solid white shirts and big belt buckles. You know what I mean? Because of the people that I hung out with, you know, and I was going to rodeos and stuff. I didn't even like rodeos, you know, but you know, but they all wanted to go. So my, my point is, is that whoever you surround yourself with, whoever you allow to pour into your life, a lot of times is who you'll begin to act like. You begin to act like your atmosphere. But see, the thing about Peter and John was, was that though they had been around a lot of people, they allowed Jesus to influence their life. And because they had surrounded themselves and they had spent time with him and they, and they allowed him to pour into him, they acted like Jesus. They'd done the things that Jesus done. And he even told them, he said, you will do greater things than I. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because you know what? A lot of times, and this is something I've noticed in people, a lot of times when you surround yourself with the wrong type of people, they will cause you not to reach for the things that you need to reach for because they fill your mind with things like, oh, well, you can't make it. You know, they'll tell you things that are untrue. We're well, not smart enough to do that. So you shouldn't even attempt to reach for that. Amen? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because whoever you surround yourself with, a lot of times, is who you begin to act like. And people can perceive that about you. They can recognize. Did you know that people today, if you begin to go out, and if you spend enough time with Jesus right now, you know, if you spend enough time with Jesus, you spend enough time in God's Word, and you spend enough time with people who are on the same mission as you, who are studying God's Word and who are pursuing Christ every day, did you know eventually that you'll begin to act like Christ? And that some things that may used to be a stretch for you are no longer a stretch for you because you've exercised and you've stretched that part of your life out. And so now it's not uncomfortable. It's not awkward when you begin to step out in faith and begin to do things like reaching down to a crippled man and telling him, I don't have money, but what I do have, I'll give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk, you know, I believe that I believe that if we spend enough time with Jesus Christ, that we could walk up to an addict and say, you know what, I don't know it exactly what you're going through because I've never been there and I don't have all the answers but what I do have I'm going to give you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I set you free from the addiction and you know that I actually believe that Christ will intervene and set people free from that because if I if I spend enough time with it you know what what happens is is the reason and I've said this before the reason that we don't see this kind of stuff happening in the the western society and in the United States is because of our unbelief because we don't actually believe that we can do that you know let me tell you how I know that how I come to that conclusion I come to that conclusion because I, I have many friends that travel across the world and they tell me how amazing it is when you go into a third world country where they don't have medicines and they don't have all this stuff and you know and everything like that and they don't have all this religion because religion actually binds people up and keeps them from receiving and keeps them from acting out the gospel keeps them from acting out uh, of the will of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I've got some friends who are like, man, when you go into a third world country and you'll get up there and you'll start preaching, he said, people will come up with sicknesses and stuff. And he said, and the thing is, he said, is that you haven't even really done anything. You've just preached the gospel and you can lay hands on them. He said, man, people get healed left and right. You know, they've seen people, uh, you know, that couldn't walk, walk again. 
You know, they've seen people have certain diseases, get healed from diseases and stuff like that. And we have, we have come to the conclusion that it all has to do with our unbelief. Because when we approach people, a lot of times we're doubting ourselves, aren't we? A lot of times we're like, well, I hope, you know what I mean? If you feel like God's told you to do something, you're like, well, I hope this works, you know? And, uh, and we step into that place. But I believe we've got to get to this place like Peter and John. You know, Peter and John were bold about it. I didn't know if it was going to work or not. And you know what? Sometimes you may not even see it because Peter, if you'll remember, uh, with the crippled man and, and everybody come up and Peter starts preaching to the people. And then as, as Scripture actually says, as he was preaching, you know, they came and arrested him and took him and John to prison. Well, you know what happened while they was in prison? You know what it said? It said, those who heard began to believe. So see, Peter and John were in prison. They didn't even know that the church had grew to 5,000 people. So sometimes when you do something, you've just got to trust that Jesus is intervening even though you might not see it. Because you, be, you might be gone and Christ is back here stirring the hearts of people, causing them to believe. You know what? You might, you might walk up to that addict and you might tell them that, hey, I break the bondage of addiction off of your life. And you know what? It might not happen right then. And sometimes I believe that when we don't see it happen right then, we think it didn't work. But we just have to say what God has told us to say and just believe that He's going to make it work. Because it may take time to unfold and it may take time to become real to this person. Amen? So what we reach for, sometimes, you know, we reach for, for goals. Anybody reach for goals? Anybody have goals in their life, things that they reach for? You know, I've had goals that I reach for and stuff that I strive to do, you know, but I really begin to ask myself, are the goals that we're reaching for, are they really good? You know, are they good goals? Are they good things to reach for, you know? I've been reaching for losing weight for quite some time now, and I believe it's a good goal. I just can't quite reach it because I can't let go of the donut. You know, so I, I can't, you know, it's like I want to reach it. I'm like, I, I see you, skinny Justin, but uh, <laughs> this donut's good. Okay, after this one, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Do we, are we reaching for good goals? Are we reaching for good things? And you know what? Sometimes I believe that people feel an emptiness and they feel something in their lives and what they're doing is, is they're reaching for stuff. They're reaching for goals. They're reaching for success. You know, because we, we have this idea about what success is in our society today. And so a lot of people begin to reach for success. They begin to climb the corporate ladder. Or they begin to do all these things thinking that if I just make it to the top, if I, ju if I make $100,000 a year, I'll be good. Well, I'm going to tell you what, when you make it to $100,000 a year, it won't be good enough by the time you make it there. Then you'll be like, well, now I need $150,000. If I can just make $150,000, then it'll be good enough. The problem is, is I believe that we have a lot of people who are reaching for stuff because they feel something missing in their life and they're trying to fill it with the wrong kind of goals. They're reaching for the wrong things. And you know what? I believe there's nobody better to explain this than Paul. Because Paul was a man in his time that pretty much had it all. Had it all together. He was the one that if you were a Jewish person, if you were a Jewish man, Paul was the mark. He was what you strive to be like. Paul was that goal, what you wanted to be like. And so I want to read you some stuff that Paul talks about, about reaching for these goals, about reaching for the wrong kinds of things, about trying to fill your life with things that are not really important. Okay? Because sometimes we think that things are important and they're really not important. You know what I mean? Anybody feel that way? Just me. Amen. Go, Justin. All right. Preaching, preaching to you, God. So Paul says this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 4, and I'm going to read verse 4 through 11. And Paul says this, he says, Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. You know, because what happens is, is that when we start reaching for these goals and we start climbing this ladder, all of a sudden we become confident in us. 
We become confident in our abilities because we're like, well, I made it this far. I did all the, I, Has anybody ever done that? I've done that. Okay, I mean, like, I've done that, like, recently, you know, like I, I have, you know. Well, I put myself through school. I graduated college. Well, I did this. I did, you know, I've done that for, you know, because I don't claim to have it all together because I'm still following and learning from Jesus, but I surround myself with people who can help me realize how to change my goals. Okay? And so I'm hoping that through this today, maybe the Lord will challenge you to assess what you're reaching for. So he says, Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. You know, have you ever met anybody that was confident and then you were like, no, I'm more confident because I got more than you did. You hear what I'm saying? I, I see this, I, I, for real, I see this on a college level and I see this sometimes in, 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 the, uh, in the church because, and, and it's crazy and I even got sucked into it myself for a little bit, you know. Uh, but, you know, you see this thing where like some people don't have an education and they're kind of like, oh, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just living for the gospel. I'm just doing this. And then, you know, you got somebody like me that comes along and like, well, I got a bachelor's degree, so I know what I'm talking about. You know, I went to school. I got a piece of paper that says I know what I'm talking about. And then you got somebody that comes along with a master's degree. It's like, oh, well, you got a bachelor's. I got a master's. Or, you don't know. You ain't been through what I've been through. And then, then so forth and so on. Oh, yeah, you got a master's. Well, they call me doctor okay because I have a doctorate that's how much I know so people build this confidence in their flesh they build this confidence in what they think they know and and we do that we do that when we reach a goal or when we reach an area in our life where we think we've become successful and we think we got there on our own all of a sudden we begin to become confident in the flesh we begin to become confident in who we are and Paul says you know what if you think you're confident if you think you got a reason to be confident, I got way more reasons than you got to be confident. And then he says this, Paul says this, he says, I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He said, if you was a Hebrew, I'm, I'm the Hebrew that you want to be like. Because I was circumcised, I, was, I did all the stuff that was, you know, the ritualistic stuff that the Jewish men had to go through. He said, I went, I did everything by the book. I did everything by the book. He said, I was the Hebrews, uh, Hebrew of Hebrews. As the law, I was a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. And then he goes on, he says, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. He said, I, you know what? I kept the law. He said, I did everything right. I kept all the laws. I kept the laws. He said, I was the Hebrew of Hebrews. You know what I mean? If you're a Hebrew, I'm who you want to be like. I set the bar because I've got confidence in my abilities because of everything that I've done. You hear what I'm saying? He said, out of everything I've done, I've done it because it was me doing it. You hear what I'm saying? That's confidence in the flesh. So, you know, he, he was basically saying, you know what? If, if you think you're a Hebrew, he said, I'm a better Hebrew. Anybody ever heard that? Well, if you think you're a Christian, I'm a better Christian. I'm a Christian of Christians. I keep all the laws. You hear what I'm saying? Because we still have that today. We still have that. I'm a Christian of Christian because I keep all the laws, and yet they don't understand. Anyways, we ain't going to go there. Praise Jesus. Amen. We'll just pray for him, Lord. But check this out. Check this out, what Paul says. He says, but whatever gain that I had, I counted it as a loss. I counted it as loss for the sake of Christ. He said, indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. Paul began to notice something about the goals that he was reaching for in his life. You know, he had it all together, right? If we could bring Paul into the 21st century, he's a successful businessman. You know, he, he, he's built a Fortune 500 company. He makes millions of dollars. You know, he did everything right. He went to school. You know, he did all this stuff. He did everything that society was telling him was right. He did that. But at the end of it, he still felt like something was missing. And then finally, one day, he encountered a man named Jesus who told him the truth about the goals that he was reaching for in his life. 
I wonder how many goals we're reaching for that are the wrong goals. I wonder how many things we're reaching for that God has not even called us to reach for. And you want me to tell you why He's not helping you reach it? Because He ain't called you to reach for it. And a lot of times we think that, oh, well, God's mad at me. He's not helping me reach my whatever. Maybe, just maybe now, I'm, I'm just, it's just a, this is just a suggestion. Maybe God's looking out for you because He knows that if you gain possession of the very thing that you're reaching for, all of a sudden you will become more confident in your flesh than you will be confident in who He is in your life. So maybe He's keeping you from being too confident in yourself. Therefore, He's not going to allow you to reach the very thing that you're reaching for. Paul said, you know what? I reached for all this stuff. I reached for all this success, but I still felt something missing. And then one day I realized that I had been reaching for the wrong thing the whole time. When I met Jesus, I counted everything that I had reached, all of my successes. I counted them as rubbish so that I could get to know Christ because that is what I need to reach for. Because you know what? If you want success, success comes from reaching for Christ. You know what I'm saying? If you want healing in your life, healing comes because you reached for Christ. Not because you reached for healing. Not because you reached for some televangelist. Not because you reached from some prophet that said he can heal you if you would just touch the hem of his garment because, you know what I'm saying, he's been to the Holy Land and he's met the rabbi and he wears, the, you know what I'm saying? I see this all the time. People are like, well, if I could just go to Dr. So-and-so's conference, I believe I would get healed. I'm like, you know what I believe? I believe that if you would just reach for the right goals, you would get healed. I believe if you would just reach for the right thing that you would get healed. Paul said, you know what? I've been reaching for all these wrong things all these years. And then finally I realized that if I would just reach for Christ, if I would just reach out, if I would just stretch, because you know, let me tell you something, it was a big stretch for Paul. Because Paul was a Hebrew of Hebrews, you know, that was part of the reason he persecuted the Christian church. You know, because everything that they were teaching and everything that they were talking about did not line up with what they had known all of their life. And so the Jewish law and all that stuff, and these people come on the scene and they're preaching grace and they're preaching Christ the Messiah and all this kind of stuff. And so for Paul to let go of everything that he had obtained on his own. You know, he said, I obtained a righteousness. He didn't say the right. He said, I obtained a righteousness through the law by my own works. But let me tell you something. If you could obtain righteousness through the law, then you don't need Jesus. Therefore, when you begin to, uh, therefore, when you continue to try to reach for things through the law, you'll never make it. You'll always be frustrated. You hear what I'm saying? Because you're not reaching for Jesus. When I reach for Jesus, I find the fulfillment of the law in my life. Because He is the fulfillment of all those things. Amen? And so Paul wanted, he said, he did all this stuff that I may gain Christ. Because to gain Christ it is more than, than reaching any goal. And so in verse 9 he says, and, uh, I, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, a righteousness from God that depends on faith. Paul says, you know what, it's not about what I can reach for. It's not about what I can do. It's not about me. It's about reaching for Christ in faith, knowing that when I reach for Him in faith, it opens a door that allows grace to flow into my life. It allows righteousness to flow into my life. You know, I heard this statement. I thought it was an excellent, excellent statement. Imagine this, if you will. Faith is a door that's in front of you. Okay? Now, you're on one side of this door. God's on the other side of this door. Grace is on the other side of this door. Healing, success, all the things that you're looking for, all the things that you want are on the other side of this door. Faith is what causes you to reach out and open that door. You hear what I'm saying? Faith gives you access into God's grace. Faith gives you access into God. See, because Paul said, I wanted to be found in Him. 
And the only way that you can ever find yourself in Him is when you open the door by faith and believe that He's there. Amen? I know I'm preaching good. Y'all ain't got to shout or nothing. I know. I'm preaching good. Stephen Furtick, eat your heart out. Ain't got nothing on me. Anyways, I digress. He says, but the, you know, the faith, the righteousness of God that depends on faith in verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and may share His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Because when you begin to reach for the right things, you'll no longer feel dead inside. A lot of people right now, they feel dead inside. They feel lost. They feel like they they can't get it. But you know what? I think if we could get them to understand that you're reaching for the wrong things. If you would just reach for, for Christ, if you just reach for Him, He'll reveal the resurrection power. Because what? The Spirit comes into your life. And the very same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead now begins to live in you. You hear what I'm saying? So what is it that you're reaching for? What what have you been reaching for in your life that maybe you've been trying to do it in your own will? You've been trying to do it in your own power. And you know what? You still feel like something's missing. Anybody ever done that? What a bunch of liars. Okay, well, I've done it. Praise Jesus. Okay, I've done it. The Lord taught me how to change my goals. The Lord taught me what to reach for, you know, because I always had this idea about how success was built until one day I realized that success is not built by you. Success is received from Him. You hear what I'm saying? If I want strength, I don't get strength because, you know, I put myself through a bunch of stuff. I received strength because I reached for Him. I stretched for Him, even though it was uncomfortable for me sometimes to stretch and ask for help, even though it was uncomfortable for me sometimes when I didn't have enough money to stretch and reach and ask for help. You hear what I'm saying? But if I reach for Him, I receive what I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? So what it does is it basically takes the whole uh, focus off of you. It's no longer about you. It's about Him. You know what I'm saying? It's about reaching for Him. And I want to read this real quick in the message version because, man, I thought this was so good. And, and I got to that place, you know, I, I, y'all have heard me talk about before. Like sometimes I take notes and, uh, you know, as I'm studying and stuff like that, like I'll write thoughts down and, and whatnot. And as I was sitting there reading this, I, I started doing the whole preaching on paper thing. And so I can't really read my notes. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to read it from here. But this is what it says in verse 12 after Paul has said all of this after Paul has challenged them on what they're reaching for. And I hope that this is challenging you to some degree this morning to ask yourself what it is that you're reaching for. And Paul says this, and I love this. In verse 12 he says, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made. He said, but I'm well on my way. See, I stand up here today And tell you that I ain't got all this figured out. I don't have it all together. But I'm on my way. I'm on my way. And you know what? I believe that you are on your way. And he says, I'm on my way reaching out for Christ. Who has so wondrously reached out for me. You you see this picture between what we talked about last week? You see that? Because if we were to put ourselves in the place of the crippled man who's reaching out for something that's just going to get him through the day, something that's just momentary satisfaction, something that's just going to please me for a little bit, if we put ourselves in that position, Paul just put us in that position. He said, you know what? We may not have it figured out. He said, but I'm reaching out for a goal. I'm reaching out for Christ. And when, and when you begin to reach out for Him, it says that He will reach out for you so you won't experience a momentary satisfaction 
action, but you begin to experience something that changes your whole life. He says, for he has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It, it's all about Jesus is the goal in your life. Amen. Jesus should be, the, should be the, the, basically the only goal in your life. And then everything else will begin to flow out of that. Because you know what? Paul would have never known how to do what Paul done had he not reached out for Jesus that day on the road to Damascus. And you know what? He says, even after all these years, even after all this ministry and all this training, I still don't have it figured out. So I want to tell you that it doesn't matter how much school you go through or how much time you've spent in the ministry, you never got it all figured out. As long as you continue to press toward the goal, as long as you continue to press towards Jesus reaching out for Him, every time you reach, you will find a hand. Amen? He says, I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. How many of you know that's the way we need to be? We need to be turned towards Jesus. We need to be off. We need to be running. We don't need to look back. He said, so let us, so let's keep Focused on that goal. What's he saying? Keep your eyes, keep your mind focused on the goal. Keep your mind focused on Jesus, the one whom you're reaching out for. He said, those of us who want everything God has for us. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You will see it. You know what I'm saying? So if you've got your mind focused on the wrong goals, if you'll just reach out for him and say, God, fix my eyesight, fix me so I can be focused on you because everything that you have is what I want. And you can't do that until you get 100% committed to reaching out to him, until you get 100% committed to laying down everything that you think you've obtained up to this point in your life. Until you can lay down everything that you think you've earned. You will never be able to receive what He has to give you. Why? Because your hands are full of the wrong things. And when your hands are full of the wrong things, you can't receive. Amen? He says, you'll see it. He says, now, and this is, this is, this is kind of my punchline for you. Uh, this is what I want you to see. Now that you're on the right track, stay on it. Now that maybe this morning, now maybe this morning that I've gotten you focused on what it is that you're reaching for in your life, and I'm not saying that you've, you're failing at life, or I'm not saying that you've done everything wrong, but I'm saying challenge yourself. What are you reaching for? What is it that you really want? Do you really want to find yourself in Christ? Do you really want to have everything and possess all things that He has for you? Because He says that He will give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He will give you all of those things. But you have to be 100% committed to pursuing Him. You know why? Because the journey can be tough. And Paul said, you know, that I've joined in His suffering. Not that, you know, which Paul did back in that day, experience like real life suffering. But today you experience a different kind of suffering. Today you experience people who oppose you. You experience that spirit of opposition. I promise you, I've... Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The Holy Spirit is trying to get out of there. <laughs> Got a container. That's the first time for everything. <laughs> but you will encounter that spirit of opposition, that spirit that tells you that you can't make it. And sometimes it comes through the form of those that you surround yourself with. That's why I stress the importance of who you're keeping as company. You hear what I'm saying? Who are you keeping as company? What goals are you reaching for? Are you reaching for the real goal? Because you know what? Sometimes there's a way that gets made when you reach. And I'm going to read this. I want to read this to you. The Lord laid this on my heart late last night as I was studying because there's a lot of people I think that get to this place. I'm going to read it in the message version. There's a lot of people that get to this place 
Or maybe they pursued God at one point. And maybe they made it a good ways with Him. They've trusted Him. They've lived in faith. They've done a lot of things. But then they arrive at this place, this crossroads, if you will, where all of a sudden there seems to be no way forward and I'm being pursued by my past. I'm being pursued by the enemies of my past. I'm being pursued by the things that I left behind that I walked away from. And so I'm caught in this place where I don't know what to reach for. I've seen people get here. I've been here. And the Lord laid this on my heart last night. He took me back to the story of Moses in the Exodus. A people who for this short period of time were following God. They were living. They were trusting Him in faith. Cloud by day, fire by night. All of these things. And then guess what? One day, you know, they were reaching this whole time. And then one day they arrived at an ocean. They arrived at a sea. All of a sudden, there seemed to be no way forward. And when I turned and I looked back, I saw my enemies coming for me. And guess what they did? All of a sudden they reverted back to themselves. And then they began to blame Moses. Well, you brought us out here to die. All this kind of stuff. All of a sudden the mentality shifted from life to death. Because I can't see the way forward. And my enemies are coming behind me. But look at what God said right here. And I thought this was awesome. God said to Moses, Why cry out to me? Speak to the Israelites. Order them to get moving. I'm speaking to you today. I hope that God's using me to speak to you today, to order you to get moving, to order you to press on towards that goal, to order you to push towards Christ. Even though you might not see the way, keep moving. And then he tells this, he says, order them to get moving. He says, hold your staff high and stretch. And stretch your hand out over the sea. What I want to tell you today is stretch. If you'll just stretch and reach your hand out over your situation, over whatever's keeping you from moving forward, over whatever's blocking you from getting to the other side. If you will just stretch yourself, if you'll just stretch your hand out over the sea, split the sea. The Israelites will walk through the sea on dry ground. So he's saying that if you'll just stretch your hand, if you'll just stretch yourself, I will make a way for you. But you have to stretch. If you don't stretch, if you don't reach, you're never going to see it. But the moment that you stretch and you begin to access this thing by faith, he said, I will make a way for you. And once I make a way for you, he says, meanwhile, I'll make sure that your enemies keep their stubborn chase. I'll use Pharaoh and his entire army, his chariots and horsemen to put my glory on display so that the Egyptians will realize that I'm God. Did you know that sometimes when you stretch out your hand and God begins to make a way for you, he'll use the very thing that was trying to kill you, the very thing that was trying to come up behind you. He'll use your past the mistakes that you made, the thoughts that try to haunt you. He'll use those very things to put His glory on display so that people will know when they see you pass through that He is God. And when they see you, they will follow you. So what I'm trying to say is that if you will stretch, sometimes you can make a way for more than just yourself. You can make a way for many people, all because you were willing to, to stretch when it was uncomfortable and you didn't know what the outcome was going to be and you wasn't sure if you were going to look stupid or not when you stretched your hand out. You hear what I'm saying? All because you decided to stretch, God began to make a way and people began to walk and move in freedom. He began to display Himself on glory all because you decided to reach and you decided to stretch when you stretch and you reach towards the goal A way will be made. What are you reaching for? What are you stretching for? Right now, 
What's keeping you from moving forward? What's keeping you from moving forward? I want to encourage you today that if you'll stretch and if you'll reach your hand out over your situation, God will begin to part whatever's keeping you from moving forward. And you know what? I'm not going to sit here and say that you're not going to fall. You may fall, but if you fall, fall forward. You hear what I'm saying? Don't ever fall backwards. Always fall forward. Because when you fall forward, it lets you know that I I didn't stop. I'm still going. I'm heading the right direction. I may have fell, but I fell further. You know what I mean? I fell forward. I heard Denzel Washington say that, and I thought it was awesome. And it fit right inside my message. He said, if you're going to fall, fall forward. You may fall down seven times, but you're going to get up eight. You know what I'm saying? Don't give up. Keep pressing. Keep pushing. Don't give up. Keep pressing. Keep pushing. God will make a way. When there's a mountain in your way, He said if you'll just stretch and you'll just trust in Him and you'll just have faith, He said you can say to that mountain, move from my path and it will move itself. Amen? And you know what? I've seen God do amazing things in my life. I've seen Him make a way when there was no way. Have you seen God make a way in your life before? Yes. You know what I believe? I believe He'll do it again. I believe He'll do it again and again and again until we get to this place to where we live by faith so much so that there are no longer any obstacles in our way. We don't see things stopping us from moving forward. Amen? Stand on your feet.